Fitting larger tires on a vehicle than what it was originally designed for can present a lot of different challenges. The engine is going to have to work harder to rotate the tires, in turn consuming more fuel and creating more wear and tear on the drivetrain. More weight equals greater rolling mass and more braking distance. The suspension is going to have to work harder to control that extra weight of the tires and depending on the size of the new tires, they're probably not even going to fit without performing several modifications first, like a taller suspension lift or wheels that help your tires stick out further so that they don't interfere with the suspension or control arms, or even having to trim and cut out some materials in order to prevent the tires from rubbing while flexing and turning lock to lock. And that's why in today's video, which will be the first of several vehicle fitment videos that we'll be doing in a series, we're going to look at the 2007 to 2018 and a half Jeep Wrangler JKs and go through with you guys what size tires fit with what particular modifications that need to be done first to make those larger tires fit. But before we even get into it, guys, keep in mind that when you are ready to upgrade your tires, that we have pretty much any brand, model, and size of tire in stock that you could possibly be looking for by shopping on our website at Trouble Off Road or by clicking the link in the description. And if you decide to add a set of wheels with that tire purchase, we're going to mount, balance, and we're going to ship those tires to you at no extra cost. Unless you're in Hawaii or Alaska. Sorry guys, but we got to charge you freight. To begin, there are several areas where a larger tire will interfere with multiple components on your Jeep. The front bumper while turning and flexing, the inner liner behind the tire, both on the front tires and the rear tires, and the coil springs, shocks, and the control arms, all while articulating the suspension or turning or a combination of both. So the first thing we need to consider is pushing the tires out away from the suspension and the control arms to eliminate that problem. But by how much? Well, to understand that, we need to first understand what the current wheel and tire setup is. What size are the tires that are on there now? And what size diameter with an offset or backspacing are the wheels? Knowing and understanding how the offset and backspacing works is probably one of the most important parts to the entire equation when it comes to figuring out what size tires will fit. Once you understand offset and backspacing, from there, it's learning what size suspension lift you'll need combined with the length of the shocks and what size bump stops to go with in order to help clear the larger tires throughout the entire cycling of the suspension. Which to me, understanding the suspension lift heights is a little bit easier even to figure out than offset and backspacing. But to try to keep this video as simple as possible, remember that positive offsets will suck the wheels in towards the frame and negative offsets will push the wheels away from the vehicle. With backspacing, the higher the number of inches are, the more your wheel is gonna be sucked in towards the frame, and obviously the lower the backspacing measurement is, the more your wheel is gonna be pushed outwards. The biggest problem I've run into while researching what size tires fit JKs is that the information on wheel offsets and backspacing is literally all over the place, followed by the fact that there is no industry standard between wheel manufacturers and suspension companies as to what measurement should be used. Some suspension companies will explain that a certain amount of backspacing is required to clear the control arms and suspension components while others will use offset measurements instead. I don't know why this is like that, and personally, for the life of me, I cannot figure out the reason as to why there are two different measurements in the first place. Just like temperature readings, obviously most countries outside of the United States use Celsius, whereas we use Fahrenheit. It's the exact same temperature, just with two different names. Maybe you guys know why they use offset and backspacing as a difference. Let us know. Also, it's important to note that when calculating backspacing, that some websites will instruct you to measure from the very outside of the wheel rim to the wheel mounting surface, and that's your backspacing. But then others will measure from the inside of the rim down to where the wheel mounting surface is, and that is supposed to be your backspacing measurement. And they'll instruct you to measure that way because the width of the wheel is calculated by measuring the distance between the inner part of the rim on one side of the wheel and over to the inner part of the rim on the other side of the wheel. Instead of measuring the width of the wheel from the outside edge to the other outside edge. And this is why measuring backspacing sucks. Whereas measuring the offset is so much simpler and here's why. 
Offset measurements will tell us exactly how far we're going to move the wheel either outwards or inwards, regardless of the width of the wheel. When we upgrade to a wider wheel and tire, all we need to know is how much wider half of the tire is compared to the current tire that's on there now. That's it. From there, all we need to do is increase the negative offset of the wheel by at least the minimum of the extra tire width to ensure we are going to maintain the same amount of tire clearance as what the current setup is. Let me explain by giving you an example. Let's say that the tire that's on your Jeep right now is 10 inches wide from the outside of the sidewall on one side to the outside of the tire sidewall on the other side with the weight of the Jeep on the tires to include the sidewall bulge. This is important to measure from sidewall to sidewall and I'll explain why in a bit. Now the new tires that you've been eyeing up on Trail Build have an advertised width size of 12 and a half inches. The tricky part here is that unless you have the tire in your physical possession, you're not gonna know exactly what the sidewall to sidewall width is, even though it should be 12 and a half inches as that is how the tire widths are supposed to be measured. But why I was saying to measure from sidewall to sidewall with the weight on the tire is because when you're aired down out in the trails, you're going to have that extra sidewall bulge. Although it's going to be on the lower part of the tire closest to the ground, it doesn't hurt to add a little bit extra to the tire's width to make sure you're compensating for any additional tire width to help make sure there isn't any interference. So take your approximate width of 12 and a half inches for the new tire and add an inch and a half to that for a total of 14 inches wide to be on the safe side. That's four more inches wider overall than the tire that's on there now. So take the extra overall width compared to the current tire and divide that number in half. In this example, that would be two inches, right? Pretty easy. The reason for this is that we need to push the tire away from the suspension, frame, control arms, whatever, at least a minimum of two inches in order for it to be exactly like the current tire's clearance from all the suspension components and control arms. Now, here is why offset is so much easier than backspacing. I don't need to worry about the width of the wheel to figure out that I need to move my tire out two inches. All I need to know is the conversion number from inches to millimeters. Specifically, how many millimeters is two inches and the answer doesn't even require you to use a calculator. And that's pretty awesome because for every 25 millimeters of distance, it equals one inch. So two inches means, well, I need to multiply 25 millimeters twice, which equals 50, right? So it's that simple. Yet for some reason, us humans need to overcomplicate everything. I don't know why. So I need to push my tire out at least two inches or 50 millimeters out away from my suspension, meaning I need a wheel with at least a standard or a zero offset because the factory wheel offset, which I found multiple different answers for, but more consistently than not, it seems to be about positive 44 millimeters or 6.25 inches of backspacing on a seven and a half inch wide wheel. So do you see how simple it can be using the offsets measurements instead of trying to figure out how to calculate the amount of backspacing needed combined with the width of the wheel, et cetera, et cetera. Now, obviously it's important to make sure the width of your wheels corresponds proportionately to the width of the tire. I mean, you don't want to have a tire width that's narrower than the wheel width. Then you'd just be a stretchy boy and get called names and picked on and we don't condone bullying here. So therefore we don't condone narrower tires than what the wheel width is either. Might as well just pack your shit and head over to custom offsets if that's how you're going to be. But all joking aside, most actual off-road wheel companies like Icon Alloys, Method Race Wheels, Vision Wheels will have already accurately built their 17 and 18 inch wheels accordingly and proportionately. But if you are looking for a tire size, wheel size conversion calculator, well, we have one right on our website at the bottom of our homepage, but to keep it simple, we'll just link it in the description below. All right, so now that we've covered how to calculate the tire width clearance by pushing the tire away from the suspension components, next, we have to figure out how much clearance is needed in front of the tire, behind the tire, and above the tire while maxing out the suspension and turning lock to lock. Stock JK Wranglers are stated to be able to clear 33 by 10 and a half inch tires on stock wheels and no spacers without rubbing or around a 285.70 in metric sizing. 
To bump up to a 35 inch tire or about a 315 70 in metric, you have to make some modifications in order to fit them without rubbing. One of them, and the cheapest of them all, is to trim off about three inches of plastic from the fender flares. I'm not gonna get too much into how to do it because there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that will show you, but another option to prevent your 35s from jamming into your fenders is to limit the amount of suspension up travel using bump stops. Longer bump stops are limiting your suspension's overall travel, but is another affordable option. And speaking of affordable, another cheap option to fit 35s is to install a minimum of a one and three quarter inch coil mount spacer, which will actually help reduce a little bit of road noise coming into the body through the coil as well. The options I just mentioned are cheap, easy to install, and still maintain a pretty low center of gravity since you're not really lifting your Jeep all that much or at all but they have their limitations in suspension travel. So the next preferred option to clear 35s that offers additional suspension performance is going to be at least a two inch lift kit, but a three or a four inch kit will really offer you more suspension articulation in the taller replacement coil springs and longer replacement shocks. Not to mention, aesthetically, will give your Jeep a much more aggressive look to it. These kits are typically inclusive, which means you'll get all of the necessary components included in the kit to allow your entire suspension to work properly without being limited by things like the sway bar lengths being too short, or the added drop in the track arm relocation bracket, or even the brake lines, as most of these kits will come with extended brake lines as well. Now, if you're wanting to bump up the tire size to a set of 37s, you're opening up a whole new can of worms to make 37s work properly. Will they work with a four inch lift, trimmed out fenders and extended bump stops? Absolutely. But will they be too big for the drivetrain? Yeah, probably. Maybe not in four low out on the trails with a conservative driver behind the wheel. But the point is there's more than just fitment challenges to overcome when upgrading to larger wheels and tires. So just make sure and take a holistic approach in analyzing all the various effects that throwing on a larger tire are going to have. From needing extra braking power to re-gearing the axles and even the change in the center of gravity and the negative handling characteristics that it causes, especially at highway speeds. Also bear in mind that the factory spare tire carrier is also rated to only handle the weight of a wheel and tire combo that's good up to about 33 inches or so. So going any bigger than that will create another need to upgrade the spare tire carrier. And if you guys with JKs or JKUs have any additional comments as to how or what you did to fit your larger tires or any other information regarding tire and wheel fitment on JKs, definitely would love to hear back from you in the comments below. Remember guys, wheels, tires, suspension, and accessories, trailbuildoffroad.com or by clicking the link in the description below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuild and we'll see you guys out on the trails.